what's up you guys welcome back to MJ views today I have a video for you guys involving tips and tricks to know before you want to start breeding dogs I'm mainly doing this video because there's a lot of you guys in the comments that um, want to breed your dogs um, mainly your Australian Shepherds because you see our litter of Australian Shepherds and you fall in love with them and you're like I want to have my own more on the ugly truth of dog breeding and it's not all fun I guess let's just go ahead and get started the first point that I have before you think about breeding the studying process or the breeding process the actual breeding process is very time-consuming so everything's time-consuming when it comes to this it's not so hard finding a dog breeder to breed your dog with vice versa female or male but the process of you know taking them over there making sure that they get along making sure that your dog is ready and all of that stuff comes to play oh my god I can't concentrate because they keep on barking you see like this is ah. we took Stella to stud um, and that process alone we had to drive a 40 minute drive back and forth for three days the first day was to make sure they got along the second day was to make sure that she accepted the mail which she didn't she would just play with them all day and wasted her time and the third day was her actually accepting the mail so then after that we left her there for two more days and we still had to come back and get her because of some complications because we were breeding with a different breeder and she was too noisy for them so we had to pick her up at night bring her back and then bring her again in the morning so that was just time consuming a lot of gas was wasted not wasted but you know what I mean a lot of gas 40 minute trip back and forth so that's the first part the second part is pretty much your dog is pregnant everything has happened but you have to take care of the mom mom comes first of course and you have to take care of her take her to the vet make sure she's developing good make sure that she's well nutritioned um, and this time I usually feed her puppy food or some extra protein diet just so the puppies grow big and strong she keeps coming to me all wet her paws are dirty what are you doing? What are you doing? There you go. Look at her. <laughs> She's gonna want attention. She made you this favor of producing wonderful puppy life. While she's in the process of producing those babies, I feel like she should have all that she wants. <laughs> kind of like a pregnant woman, you know, you give her what she wants and everything is fine. I give her a lot of attention during this time and then I also keep her well nourished as well as well hydrated, always have food available, always have water available. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's just mom comes first. If she's happy and healthy, the puppies will be happy and healthy. So taking care of mom is the number one priority. It's just something that you have to be accounted for. You can't just breed your dog and expect her to live the same life as if she wasn't having puppies. Um, her whole schedule is gonna change. You know, you just gotta treat her better than you did before. <laughs> A lot better. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just that. I, I just feel it's really necessary when dog breeding that you have to have this in mind because I just don't want people to not care about mom and then, you know, the puppies don't develop well or whatever. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind. Okay, so getting into the real dirty truth um, and that's labor and delivery, but it's probably the second most dirtiest part. And that's because you won't know until you experience it, of course, but it's very stressful. Imagine how stressful it is for the mama. So the labor itself is very, very, very long sometimes. Stella's first labor, was like 20 minutes <laughs> but her second labor lasted from 7 in the afternoon till 7 in the morning and then she started having her babies so it just depends of course but you have to be prepared like always all of this is just about being prepared really but yeah so labor can be very long or very short depends and then the actual delivery is usually very long um, she had eight puppies an hour in between. Jeremiah would usually be the one to deliver the puppies because you know he was more um, brave than I was. <laughs> I was very scared to like mess something up 
but usually they come out in a little sack and with the umbilical cord attached you need some sterilized scissors cut the umbilical cord pretty close to the belly and then you know kind of tear the placenta make sure they breathe um, Stella usually does this part by licking them and that kind of gives them like compressions and then they can breathe but if she doesn't do that I would very gently very very gently just kind of like pet them and they should start breathing but that's that's pretty much it <laughs> it sounds very um, easy for the most part and I'm pretty sure it is it's just the stressful part of like knowing that you're in charge of a life at that point I, we've talked about it more in a previous video in the q and A, I, I think and I'll leave it down below to kind of explain what we do during that process and there could be a lot of liquids and a lot of you know B-L-O-O-D so um, yeah it's a whole nother ballpark um, but good thing it's only one day <laughs> and you just clean it up and move on but you really can't know what it is until you experience it but of course you have to be prepared so yeah I'll leave a link down below okay so the puppies are here yay but they cry so so much um, so of course before doing any of this I did very very much research very a lot a lot of research and the number one thing that stood out to me is that happy puppy does not cry so puppies usually cry because they are either cold or they are hungry our puppies don't cry during the day <laughs> they cry at 3 in the morning every single day um, and that's because uh, Stella is asleep and she is not thinking I'm not gonna say she's not thinking about her puppies but she's asleep and she wants her sleep I'm pretty sure like all of us they have to wake up Stella and in that that makes us wake up of course because I'm gonna play a clip it is so freaking loud <laughs> It will definitely wake you up, especially if it's, you're in the same Like for us, we keep them in the same room till about four weeks. That's just to make sure they're safe and we don't want them outside um, and then escape or anything because they're escape artists too. So you have to keep that in mind too. Those four weeks, they cry every single day at three in the morning because they want to eat. Because puppies usually eat about two to four hours before their four weeks. And after that, they still cry. like. After four weeks, they cry so much more. We're feeding them less time, but more food, kind of to get used to the feeding two day, two times a day schedule. And especially because they know, they get curious and they want to go outside and explore. And they can't because they're in a cage or something, so they cry for that. And it's just a bunch of crying and just make sure you're ready for that. A lot of crying. And we always compare it to babies <laughs> because I'm pretty sure babies don't, Oh, well, I've heard babies don't want to sleep and that, that you're up all day, like all night. So I guess puppies are a little better, but they're still going to wake you up at 3 in the morning. This is, okay, so this is the very, very dirty truth because it's actually very dirty, like literally. We're talking about the poop. Until three weeks, it's nice and dandy because, you know, Stella picks up after them. All that they're pooping is usually just her milk. So she just eats it back up. It's kind of gross, but I mean, it saves you a lot of time and um, you don't have to really worry about it. But at four weeks when you start introducing the kibble or wet food or anything like that, they start getting messy and they start pooping. And I do not let Stella eat that poop because it is not good for her, I'm pretty sure. And it can damage her teeth, so I don't let her eat it. Um, and it's too gross. I usually have to pick it up. But like I was saying, oh well, I had a vlog. Okay, so a vlog's coming up. Go ahead and watch that because it's a daily life of this whole routine of feeding, picking up, playing, all of that stuff. And you guys will have more in depth of how it actually is. Right now there's six weeks, at least that's six weeks because I just filmed it today actually. It'll be up soon. But once it's up, I'll leave it down in the description as well. But yeah, it is a disaster. Like, they step all over their poop. They don't care if they get it in their fur. Like, it's so gross, you guys. Like, I can't even describe it. Look how annoying they are. The puppy pads are not going to work at this time <laughs> because they will chew them and put them to one side and not even use them anymore. 
and it's gonna be on the floor, squished and dry, and you will not be able to pick it up very easily. You're gonna have to like scrape it and get in there. It's a lot, you guys have to see it. For most of the stuff, you guys have to see it. Like me just telling you, you're probably like, ah, I could do it, but like if you see it, you're gonna be like, why did I do this? And at the end of it, it's because you really wanted puppies. Okay, so now, um, like them, there are currently six weeks. At four weeks, they start getting their teeth, and it's the funniest thing ever because they're so tiny and sharp, and they look like shark teeth. They teeth during this time. And guess who they teeth towards? Poor Stella, at this time, does not want to feed them anymore, but they still force themselves on her, and she gets bruises and scratches all over her stomach. And I try my best to not let them feed, but you know, sometimes Stella gives in and actually feeds them, which I don't know how she does it. No more eating. They're big, they have their own teeth, they can eat by themselves. Like, look at these choppers. <laughs> let me do it. So this is when they start biting. They're gonna bite your toes, they're gonna scratch your legs, bite your legs, bite your hands, bite your fingers. It's gonna be really hard especially if you have to come in and clean them you are gonna either have to put them somewhere like a crate or something but they will get curious and bite your hands and they just don't understand anything yet so you can't tell them no don't do that because they don't know what that means you have to be very patient with them because you have to understand that they're puppies they don't know what they're doing they're barely learning what the world is. Nine puppies biting you I'm just gonna say is very unpleasant I rather not have that you know um, but it's gonna happen and they bite each other so I mean they know their strength I'm pretty sure they just they don't have it up there yet and the next thing is expenses it's not cheap to you know breed your dog first of all if you don't have your stud you're gonna have to pay a fee for that um, you're gonna have to buy either a playpen, a kennel, anything like that to keep the puppies in there. Um, you know, puppy pads, uh, food when they are starting to feed themselves, and, and I mean toys and all those little miscellaneous things. But it could add up, especially we had to buy them two times food and we buy them the big bag because there's a lot of them the big bag is $50 so we already spent $100 on food with them um, we we bought her playpen for them to stay in the night so yeah it could add up and people don't really think about these things they just think oh my dog's not have puppies oh also the whelping pen you have to buy a whelping pen before she has the puppies it's very very um, required very much required because she won't if she doesn't have a whelping pen or any other place that she feels safe delivering her puppies and she can have them anywhere like in the closet I mean I guess you could do that but I do not recommend it I rather her feel safe somewhere you know comfortable and not just under the bed or anything the most important things the things that I listed and I'll put like some prices for them the cheapest ones that I can find and also put them in the description down below supplies and stuff so yeah that's that but after everything the last point I have is um, you have to know that they're gonna leave eventually to their new homes or wherever you know you can't just keep eight puppies unless you have a big farm and plan to but most people don't keep their puppies um, I'm really good at not getting attached to them but for the most time I mean at the end of the the day you do end up loving them I mean you raise them pretty much and um, and they're very unique and they have their own personalities and like I, I love all of my puppies like I usually like to get in touch with the owners so I could see them grown up you know that's always nice but you have to know that you can't get attached that they're gonna leave and you have nothing to, you can't do anything about it you know so you have to be prepared for that as well so not saying that any of these things are bad I mean after they're gone, I look back and I'm like, it was all worth it. I loved raising them. I loved um, doing all of this to make them healthy and happy. 
that's like the number one priority i've said it in my videos before so if they're that then i'm happy and they go to their new owners i make sure that the owners are suitable for my puppies i'm very picky on the owners but everyone's different i just wanted to put this video out there so you know like what to expect not saying that you're not going to be able to handle it but i just want you all to know that it's not easy taking care of puppies um their responsibility they require a lot of attention and a lot of um, proper care so yeah if you guys still are very intrigued in breeding puppies it is an experience um it's a wonderful experience especially the labor the birthing of them like that's like incredible raising them as well is very very nice like i said like they all have their own personality and of course they're like us you know they're very <laughs> they're very um they're very independent at least like puppies are very independent they're their own person they're their own puppy their own puppy <laughs> but yeah i hope you guys learned a little something and made up your decision don't make up your decision here i do more research but this is just a couple of points that are very relevant to me to be able to share it with you about like the hardships about this but yeah i can go on all about this because there's so many experiences that i've had with them every day is different so thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate you guys having a little bit of time with me sitting here and listening to all that i have to say i hope you guys take this into consideration um that they're very important points that you have to know about breeding and yeah i'll stop talking now thank you guys so much for watching and if you guys are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe i post a lot of things about aussies dogs tips and tricks also vlogs about my real life yeah don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and i'll catch you guys in the next one bye